When Angela was a young woman, she suffered a terrible accident that interrupted all her plans. She thought she would have the support of her husband, Michael, but what he did to his wife was revolting. Angela had been Susan's friend since childhood, when they studied together and grew up in the same neighborhood. The inseparable friends graduated from the same college and worked in the same company. One day, the two friends went to a nightclub after work. They were drinking cocktails and discussing their latest failed relationships when, suddenly, a guy with a bouquet of roses appeared in front of the girls and gave the flowers to Angela. She was initially confused, but they ended up talking the night away. The relationship with the man, Michael, developed quickly. Only six months later, he asked his girlfriend to marry him. Angela was surprised, but she really liked him, as he was handsome and charming, plus he was friendly and got along well with her family. After considering the pros and cons and listening to her friend's advice, Angela agreed and said yes to her future husband. They invited only a few of Michael's friends, his mother, and Angela's best friend Susan to the wedding. One year later, they had a wonderful daughter who brought them closer together. Time passed, and Angela was happy to have a life that she considered perfect. After all, she had a beloved daughter, a wonderful husband, an excellent job with growth prospects, and many life plans. She could have not imagined it would all be over in an instant. Angela was rushing to get home that day. Nothing special, she just had a lot of things to do. Unfortunately, it was raining hard, and she could not start her car. So the young woman decided to walk home since it was only a few streets away. But her new high heel shoes were not made for wet sidewalks, and she took a terrible fall. She hit her head hard on the pavement and went unconscious. Luckily, some pedestrians passing by stopped to help her. Angela slowly came to her senses in the intensive care unit. She had to undergo two surgeries and prolonged therapy in the hospital for three months, and only then was she released to go home. Angela was left bedridden, unable to sit up on her own. A few days after arriving home, the young woman received the terrible news that she would have to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Her daughter was not even three years old at the time. Luckily, her husband took their daughter to see her every day, often accompanied by her best friend Susan. Soon, the paralyzed woman began to notice how her friend was exchanging strange glances with her husband. In addition, Susan would go to the kitchen and Michael would follow her, behaving very suspiciously. Angela watched them and to her horror, she clearly understood what was happening. She didn't want to believe it, but she was paralyzed, not blind. Finally, in tears, Angela asked Susan not to come to her house anymore, but her friend just laughed in her face. After a few months, Angela felt a little better. Susan continued to come almost every day, but she and Michael only occasionally went to Angela's room. At night, her husband always accompanied Susan home. They didn't even try to hide their relationship anymore. Michael hired a private nurse for Angela, and he began to spend almost all of his time at Susan's house. By that time, Angela could sit safely and move around in a wheelchair. Michael rarely brought his daughter to see Angela, and she suffered greatly from this. The few times they did bring her, the girl would always cry and not want to go back to her grandmother's house. She wanted to be with their mother, whom she missed tremendously. Michael appeared at home less frequently, and soon the day came when he announced his intention to leave forever. Worse, he did it very cruelly. At the farewell, he spoke harshly to his wife. I have my whole life ahead of me, unlike you, who can only wait for death in a wheelchair. Angela was shaken to her core. The young woman began to think about whether she should continue living. But at such moments, she was saved by remembering her daughter, the only thing keeping her from doing something terrible. Soon after, Michael filed for divorce, and Angela was so depressed by everything that was happening that she quietly agreed and signed all the papers. She just wanted to get him out of her life. This was difficult, however, because of her mother-in-law. Whenever she brought her granddaughter, she would let slip how well Michael and Susan were doing, implying they made a perfect couple. On the first anniversary of the tragedy that shattered her life, Angela couldn't control herself and cried all day long. Remembering how happy she was and how perfect her life had been, she then took several deep breaths as her psychologist taught her, not really believing in all this psychological stuff, but following what was recommended without expecting much. Little did she know what fate awaited her. To overcome her despair, Angela washed her face, got dressed, and decided to take a morning walk in the park and stop at the supermarket. She rarely left the house, usually ordering everything delivered to her home. Hopefully, the change will help, she thought. 
In the supermarket's fruit section, the woman bumped into a man whose tall figure seemed familiar to Angela. She looked closer at the young face with tired eyes framed by wispy blonde hair. As she tried to remember if she knew the mysterious man, he called her by name. It was Scott, her former boss. He had always been excessively strict and demanding of the staff, but at the same time, he had always been the butt of Angela's and her friend Susan's jokes. They made fun of the fact that he lived with his mother and that, as far as they knew, he had not dated anyone for years. Angela was embarrassed by the horrible memories, but Scott, sensing his former employee's malaise, stopped and asked if there was anything he could do to help. The man looked earnestly into Angela's eyes, and there was sincerity and warmth in his voice. She whispered that she was going shopping. Her former boss immediately offered to help her, and Angela nodded blankly. She didn't understand why she responded like that, perhaps out of a subconscious desire for someone to talk to. Scott bought everything she needed and helped her take it all home, before Angela had a chance to notice. He had sorted the food and begun to prepare dinner. Obviously, he enjoyed cooking. He did it with immense passion and joy on his face, as if it were his favorite hobby. The dinner was incredibly delicious. At the end of dinner, Scott took Angela's hand, looked intently into her eyes, and told her everything would be all right. Before the kind man went home, he said he would come to see her the next day. The next day, Scott brought bags full of fruit and flowers. Angela had forgotten the last time she had pampered herself with such things. After dinner, they talked for a while, and she learned that Scott's mother had died about a year ago. She had been very ill for five years, and for all that time, her son had taken care of her. Angela felt so ashamed of all her previous words and jokes about her former boss. Weeks passed, and Scott began to come every day to visit his new friend. Angela suddenly started to care about her appearance, combing her hair more carefully, spending more time choosing clothes, and even buying new makeup. She couldn't believe she had become attached to this man so easily and quickly. He constantly gave her flowers and helped her at home with various chores. While walking together in the park, Scott liked to talk about his life. It turned out that he had a fiancé whom he dated for a long time, and they were even going to get married. But suddenly, her mother became seriously ill, and he decided to move in with his fiancé to help care for her sick mother. But this was too much for his fiancé. She decided she wanted a different life and left him for another man 10 days before the wedding. After two months of seeing Scott, Angela could no longer imagine life without him. Then, one morning while working out, she dropped a weight on her toes and to her surprise, she felt a slight pain. The paralyzed woman could hardly wait to share the news with Scott because it was the first time in a long time that she had felt anything in her legs. Yet, when Scott came home, she noted a severe look on his face, and Angela waited to see what was the matter. He said they needed to have a crucial conversation urgently. Angela was frozen, imagining he had probably come to finish everything and say goodbye to her. However, Scott suddenly took a box out of his pocket, revealing a sparkling ring, and asked for her hand in marriage. He spoke beautiful words, admitting that he liked Angela as soon as she started working for him. But with everything that was going on in his life, he simply did not have time to have a relationship. Besides, she was married. The woman had not expected such a turn of events and could not move for a moment. Then, coming out of her shock, the surprised woman shouted, Yes! And then she said she also had good news for Scott, telling him about the pain she had felt in her toe, which meant she was slowly recovering and might be able to walk one day. Shortly after, they had a beautiful wedding, sparing no expense to have a big party. Angela had fallen in love with her new husband like never before, and she understood the true meaning of a quality relationship. Scott helped her without expecting or demanding anything in return. He was also happier than he had ever been. They found a clinic that treated paralysis with innovative physical therapy techniques. It was six months of hard work and painful procedures, and Angela could barely stand the strain of the clinic. But Scott was always there to support her, and thinking about her daughter motivated her to push harder. Angela desperately wanted to get back on her feet, especially now, with so much hope for a better future. Finally, the long-awaited day came when she stood up on her own. Angela walked down the narrow hallway leaning on her cane. It was painful, but she was happy to feel the ground's firmness again. Wanting to surprise her daughter, she asked Scott to drive her to the high school. When she saw her mother standing on her own beside the car, the girl broke free from her grandmother's arms and ran towards her mom. They hugged each other tightly, tears of joy rolling down their faces. Two years have now passed, and much has changed. First, 
Scott quit his job and opened a small family restaurant, fulfilling his childhood dream. Then, one day, Angela was cleaning the house when the doorbell rang. She opened the door, and to her surprise, there was her ex-husband, who looked quite miserable. The man smelled of booze and started complaining about life. He said that Susan had kicked him out of the house, and that he had to live with his mother, who constantly harassed him. As he began apologizing, asking her to come back, reminding her that they had a daughter together, Angela pointed out that she was already married and had no interest in him whatsoever. She told Michael that she didn't want to hear any more of his nonsense, and she was happy with a faithful and reliable man, and that her ex-husband should never show his face to her again. Then, as she closed the door behind him, she remembered his hurtful words when he had left her and reflected on how life takes such unexpected turns. That same night, Angela told her husband and daughter the good news that their family would soon have a new baby. If you like this story, please leave a like, and this other video that is appearing on the screen now will probably move you as well. Have a good day and see you in the next video.